These are all longbows. They're also not longbows. Oh my head. Today we'll go through a selection of different longbows and talk about where they came from and why your understanding or definition of longbow might not be what you think it is. For those doing archery today, you will probably be more familiar with the recurve bow. The recurve bow gets its name from the shape of the limbs. The limbs curve toward the archer, then away from the archer, hence recurve. However, this isn't necessarily the most correct definition. There are longbow designs, but the limbs do have some curvature. The technical definition is that the string makes contact with the limb. In contrast, the string does not make contact with the limb on a longbow, and this is perhaps the one thing that all longbows have in common. With this in mind, there are some bows, especially the youth fiberglass bows, which are sold as recurves. Well, technically they're not. Uh, two reasons, the limbs aren't recurved, and the string does not make contact with the limb. So these would technically be short longbows. Now, many people will call this bow a longbow because it's 70 inch, it's definitely taller than I am, so it's a longbow. Well, technically, it's a flat bow, not a longbow. And the reason why this is called a flat bow is because the shape of the limbs is flat. Uh, the profile is rectangular, the limbs are flat on the belly and the back, and this is in contrast to traditional longbow designs. Now, many traditional bows do have the same flat cross-section, though the flat bow name normally refers to the style of bow used, especially in North America, where you have this derived shape. And here we have the English longbow. And you might be thinking, that's exactly what I had in mind. And here up close, we can see the D-shaped profile. So the back of the bow is flat and the belly of the bow is curved. Hence, we have that D-shape, which is the norm for English longbows. Why would I say that this isn't a longbow? Well, the reason is it's not a medieval English longbow. You see, English longbows actually diverged in design. The medieval longbows, which you may be thinking of, the 150 pound beasts which were used to shoot the Frenchman at Agincourt, they're actually different to these bows. Now the design and the profile will be similar, but the change happened at the end of the Middle Ages. So the English longbows which were used as war bows were much thicker than this. In comparison, the Victorian era longbows, which were used in the 19th century as a recreational sporting tool, were much thinner. And what you often see are things like leather grips and cutouts and rests. These things would not have been used on medieval English war bows. So while yes, this is an English longbow, it isn't the same English longbow used in the Hundred Years War. And given that modern target sport archery has its roots in this Victorian era recreational archery, then this is the style of bow that would have been used primarily up to around the 1940s and 50s. Because in the 1930s, we start seeing the development and the popularization of the American longbow. Long story short, the American longbow was the result of testing and experimentation to see why the English longbow was superior. It wasn't. They found that the rectangular shape of the limbs, especially those found in flat bows, was better. So the American longbow took its current shape. Typical features, you have this tapered middle section of the riser and you do have a cutout for the arrow. So it deviates from the traditional English longbow design but it keeps the longbow name because it is long. So this is known as the American longbow or the American flatbow. And this kind of longbow was what became uh, extremely popular for hunting and for competition. Uh, people like Halbert Hill, who was extremely well known as the world's best archer, world's best hunter, would use the American longbow as the normal bow. In fact, uh, it was uh, Halbert Hill himself who said that he had trouble shooting a recurve bow, but he absolutely loved the American longbow. 
And interestingly, by aligning these bows together, you can see perhaps the development of bow technology to what it is today. Anyway, this is New Sensei. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.